What's up everybody, D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video, and today we are going to be reviewing 2022's Shin Ultraman or 2023, depending on where you watched it. For those of us in the States, it just opened on January 11th and 12th, 2023. Ultraman! Ultraman! I already live streamed this once, but I wasn't really happy with the review. Also, I have seen the movie a second time. I saw the dub. First of all, let me just say, the dub was pretty well made. It was all right. I thought that only one voice was miscast, but I can't really talk about that without getting into spoilers. But on the whole, I thought it was pretty good. It was nowhere near as good as the original acting, though. There was a lot of times when I'm sitting there going, oh, phew, the original performance was better. <laughs> but anyways, I just wanted to say that I thought the dub was pretty well made. And I do agree with the assertion that a lot of people made that it is on par with the Shin Godzilla dub. This is going to be my first first impression spoiler free review for Shin Ultraman. I might do a spoiler review down the line when I'm actually able to watch the movie a bunch of times, analyze it, dig into the footage more, and it's actually been released. But as for now, I'll just give it a quick spoiler free review. Shin Ultraman was written and produced by Hideaki Anno and directed by Shinji Higuchi and is the third installment in the Shin Japan Heroes universe and is adapted from the beloved series Ultraman from 1966. Although it is in the sequel to Shin Godzilla, this is a standalone movie. This film from Tsuburaya Productions, Toho, and and Kahara Inc. is very much spiritually aligned with that movie. Most of the creative team returns to work on this picture, and they do a wonderful job capturing a similar energy to that movie. From an outside perspective, this movie is crazy. Although, as a fan of the 1966 series, it's actually pretty tame. The film is super stylistic as they stick to the filmmaking principles and ideals of the 1960s very faithfully. It was unashamedly silly at times and was fun from start to finish. It is soaked with a deep love for humanity that I found very touching and inspiring. It's the best superhero movie I've seen since The Batman and was very refreshing from that perspective. I miss the days when superheroes would go out of their way to save civilians and wouldn't just fight the enemy simply because the enemy was coming for them anyways. And that is exactly what this movie delivers on, a hero who is here to help humanity simply because it's the right thing to do and he cares to do it. I'm sure this will go down as one of the most unique theatrical experiences I will have in 2023. The story is very simple. Kaiju are attacking the Earth and the SSSP is created to stop them. One day, a giant silver man falls from the sky, and soon enough, SSSP member Shinji Kamanagi finds himself as the new host of Ultraman, whom he uses to combat foes from both Earth and space. This movie very much feels like what would have happened if you took the characters and worldviews held in the original 1966 show and dropped them into the modern world. It's very charming. The biggest standout by far is Masami Nagasawa's Hiroki Asami. Second might be Akari Hayami's Yumi Funabari. Unfortunately, much like with the 1966 show, our protagonist Shinji Kamanagi doesn't get much characterization and winds up being a little bland. This does have a story reason and I do appreciate it and find it interesting, but I was still a little disappointed with this decision. Along with that, outside of their very distinct personality traits, none of the characters in this film other than Asami feel very developed. And all of this cast winds up being far less memorable than the original cast from the 1960s series. This film is exceptionally well made. The cinematography is very much in line with Shin Godzilla. It's so stylistic, and the framing is captivating. You have no choice but to notice it. At times, this film delivers some of the most inventive shots I have ever seen, while at other times, it's a little distracting. The film shines most when the kaiju and Ultraman are on screen, while the human scenes sometimes feel a little cramped and unorganized. Higuchi's vision for action sequences and special effects scenes is very much his strong suit, but I do appreciate his attempt to elevate the human scenes through the use of unorthodox cinematography. Photography. However, this does appear to be an area he's still working on, and it's far less refined than it is in the kaiju sequences. This leads to it sometimes dampening the impact of a scene. The editing style is very rapid and intense as a way to keep up the pace of the film, even when the characters are just sitting around chatting. This was another masterful technique carried over from Shin Godzilla. But unlike Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman is a rapid-paced movie from start to finish. In fact, one of my biggest issues with it is that the pacing goes too fast. It very much feels like what would have happened if you took 
five individual Ultraman episodes, strung them together into a movie, and only had brief intermissions to transition us from one episode to the next. The episodic nature of this movie is something I've never seen in another movie before, and while it does create a very unique and strong style for this movie, at the same time, it's not the most seamless of storytelling. From a technical standpoint, this film is constantly breaking cinematography and editing principles on purpose. Sometimes this works to the film's advantage, while other times it does get in the movie's way. The special effects and music are also very well done. They choose to go for a very animated look for these characters to help them fit that retro aesthetic and make them seem otherworldly, but the choice to not go with photorealistic CGI characters does sometimes lead to the film feeling a little unintentionally unpolished. But I guess that's always been part of Ultraman's charm, and I truly mean that as a positive. The special effects sequences are really the film's strong suit. Often the movements of the characters feel very authentic to that suitmation of the olden days while still being updated and new and fresh. They find a way to modernize each character to make them feel like they're truly alive. Every kaiju and alien scene in the movie has their own distinct way of moving and behaving. It makes this world feel very real and lived in. I could spend hours talking about the special effects sequences in this film alone, but instead I'll save that for if I ever decide to do a spoiler review so I can get a little more in depth with it. The music is also wild. Much like with Shin Godzilla, they reuse a lot of the original soundtrack recordings from the 1966 show, which gives them a very grainy quality which I really appreciate. But unlike Shin Godzilla, sometimes they choose to re-record one of the original compositions, and it is incredible. Shihiro Sagisu returns from Shin Godzilla to compose this picture and bring with him a unique jazz flavor that complements the style of Ultraman perfectly. One of my biggest issues with this movie is the ending. The ending felt very abrupt to me. It's one of the most abrupt endings I have ever seen from a film, and I have to feel it wouldn't be very satisfying from an outside viewer's perspective. Anyone who isn't familiar with the ending of the original show has every right to be upset by the ending of this movie, as it doesn't provide much resolution. Much like the last episode of the original Ultraman series, I didn't find it completely satisfying and was left wanting a little more from it. Although I am glad I was left wanting more and not less out of the movie. I would also like to point out that my brother, who is not an Ultraman fan and has never seen any Ultraman, watched this movie with me and walked away from it very happy with it. He didn't find that the ending was jarring at all, but I will admit he is a cinephile. He has seen a lot of movies, and so a movie with a different story structure and a bit of a different ending than normal is nothing new to him. This movie is very good on the whole. The fact that it's so fun and wholesome is exactly what I needed and hoped for out of this movie. This is everything I wanted out of an adaptation of the original 1966 Ultraman series. And I would say, despite feeling fresh and new, this is a very faithful adaptation of that show. They may change some of the lore and setup, but they adapt the plots of so many episodes very faithfully. I enjoyed this movie more than I enjoyed any single episode of that original series, but I think I like that 1966 series on the whole more than I liked this movie, at least for now. One of my favorite filmmakers, Glenn Howerton, has a theory on music, stating that when you listen to an album, the song that initially blows you away the most winds up fading as time goes on. But the song that you hear and you notice something in it that you like, and only grow to love it more as time goes on, is the one that lasts with you the longest. And I hope that's what I experience with this movie. And I will say, I definitely want more. After watching this, I am left with a much stronger need and desire for a sequel to Shin Ultraman than I am for a sequel to Shin Godzilla. I know that everybody wants to compare this movie to Shin Godzilla, but I think that's a little unfair considering the movies are very different. And while that conversation doesn't really interest me a ton, I think the show should be compared to the original 1966 series rather than Shin Godzilla, I will engage just for you. As a diehard Godzilla fan, for me, this was no Shin Godzilla not anywhere close. But that doesn't discredit this film at all. The highs in Shin Ultraman were never as high as the highs in Shin Godzilla for me. But that's not to discredit this film at all. From the very first scene, this film makes it clear that it was never trying to be or going to be Shin Godzilla. It was always going to be its own thing, and I think it should be appreciated on its own merits. I suppose based on an initial viewing, I would give Shin Ultraman from 2022 an arbitrary 8 out of 10. Will that rating change? Yeah, probably. It probably will change the more I watch the movie. For the better, or worse, that's still to be determined. Thank you all for watching. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. I really appreciate their support. You can check out the Patreon using the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. And you can also chat with fellow Ultraman fans Saturn Dusk. <laughs> That'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.